Hello everyone, my name is Justin and welcome back to the Atomic Craft server. Today it is episode 9 and we are starting off in Gaming District. We are here because off camera I absolutely smashed Mr. Anakashaki. We have pulled in all of these points right here. These have already been counted because the newest bounties all heads are worth 5 points and this and this lasts till the end of the games which is just as I'm boarding 2 days away. Sharks already come in with all these. These haven't been counted though which I think leaves it. Him, roughly 10 points in front of us so i've been at it again and i've got some more points to trade in i think this will push us in the lead but i'm not sure by how much so if i just put these down here so that they don't get confused with which ones i've already cashed in which is 45 points which leaves us at 137 yeah, that sounds about right. 137, and this leaves Shark on exactly 100. So we are currently 37 points in front. And Graf's got another two heads at his base that we can always pick up if needs be. But they're just for just in case emergencies. However, in today's episode, we're going to take a break from the Witch Farm project, at least for the time being, anyway. We might go back over there towards the end of the episode. And we're going to go back towards our starter base, which we haven't been around in quite a while. And, um, oh. Enjoy these free books. Well, I thought that V Double had the bookshop. Maybe, maybe he's got some fresh competition. But that's three free books, so we might as well go cash them in later on. However, today we're not going to be doing anything to do with the shopping district. We're probably going to have to head over there once or twice to splash some cash. But we are finally going to get some builds around these two buildings right here because I'm sick and tired of being scared that every time a lightning strike occurs that these guys are going to turn into witches. So I've been thinking about what I'm going to do. And I think for over here, we're going to turn this into sort of like maybe like a farmer's house. And then for over there, I'm thinking like a barn maybe. We can have some paths coming up across. Maybe like a little wheat field where that sand is. Or over here, we're going to need some more land, which means we're going to require the services of someone. If someone that's better. If someone that's better at terraforming than me. Things are starting to busy up in the shopping district. We've got people buying plots just to resell them. Everyone is thinking of creative ways to make money. Obviously, I think the slime ones are Alex's and then these wooden ones are v -doubles. I'm over here to purchase the services from Mr. Cheggington's. I've been meaning to use this shop since it opened up and we've got quite a hefty order to put in how does this work welcome to Trigginton's terraforming shop as the land you're standing on now suggests this is some of my skills it is on the smaller scale of terraforming builds now comes in the shop part if you are in need of expert terraforming skills this is the place for you there is no set price for terraforming However, there is still a price. We'll negotiate on it when slash if you want to help terraform it. So these are some of his actual builds. Obviously, this is like a little cave entrance. This is like a snowy area, I suppose. And then this is like a desert and sort of like a, a jungle sort of type build. But we're not here for any of that. We actually need a cliff face and then a path. Not a path actually building for us. But you know the long strip of land. I'll show you when we get back to the base. We need that all turning into grass and thickening up a bit. I don't really know how to explain this, so I hope when he's watching the video, he'll know what to do. Place a paper with name on. All right, so what? So I'm guessing... Well, Alex has put custom trees next to it. I'm just going to put in here, just James. I don't know how to describe it. That's what we're going to do. So I'm going to put this over here, put this in here. And I'm hoping the Trekkingtons gets this soon, because I know that this Alex offer has been in this chest for quite some time. And I really need this doing. Oh, my builds are going to look very, very out of place. So we don't actually need to pay anything just yet. We can wait to meet up with Treggington's to actually negotiate a deal with him. I think also while I'm here, I might as well check out Alex's bookshop. Welcome to the old book. All books are one diamond each. This place is looking snazzy. I really like what he's done with the looms. All vouchers valid for one book. Respiration 3. So I'm going to steal one of these books. I'm going to get two of these because our villager is very expensive. Now what I wanted Mr. Treggington's to do is make a cliff face where I have outlined with this dirt because I actually need this build to have some sort of substance to it and this still might need pushing out a bit because obviously I don't want it to fall off so this might need a bit of playing about with. I'll do that off camera though. And over here 
what I was on about with the widening of a place is this because I actually need a path to go from over there all the way over here. So I need this widening out and then another sort of cliff face going along here. I have now just gone ahead and laid a rough outline of how far I want this thing thickening out to. And I hope that Mr. Treggington's can do a good job of this. Because the plan is, is to have a barn thing here and then have a path running along here to this build right there. Then I might also have some other odd bits popping up around here when I need them to be. But for now, this over there, this right here, and I think with this widening out, once it's done, of course, might look better. I'm not entirely sure on the outline, though, so I'm going to tell Treg that if he wants to play around with this outline to make it look more natural than he can do, same with this outline as well. I might make this a bit chunkier myself because I really do not want us to be limited here. So it's a very, very subtle difference to the original outline, but I think this now is big enough to house the build that we're going to need to put here. The build itself isn't big, it's just very, very long. And then also, as I've said before, this line can be messed around and adjusted to Treg into desire. Now that we've been over to the shopping district to ask Treg for some terraforming help, I need to go over to Mr. Shark's base to pay his vault a little bit of a visit. Now, for those of you that don't know, Shark's had this vault since day one. It was originally over in his starter base, but now it's over in this lovely looking storage system that he's got going on. But right through here, I think... Might be round the corner, I can't quite see it. But Alex's head should be there somewhere. But the whole point in this vault was for one of us to try and get in. And I remembered about these chorus fruits a little while ago, so I'm going to give this a little bit of a try. Got to make sure that we are within eight blocks of the door. What if we do this? So we block ourselves in, or will this teleport us through the slime blocks instead? Thought it would do so apparently it's eight blocks around so do we do an eight block square do all right i flooded the first two blocks on the stairs hopefully the chances are that we'll land in here fingers crossed we didn't we didn't go anywhere at all <sighs> i'm getting rather desperate here and i hope it's worth it Oh, I'm in! I'm in! Damn, that took a lot more chorus through than I was expecting. And we we, get, we came here for some diorite and some, some heads. And Alex's head isn't even here. I thought Alex's head, the one and only original Alex KP15 head was in here. And it's not. But I am in here. So I guess, if I'm not mistaken, this is m these these items are now mine. And I want that back. I know he's very proud of this. So I'll take that back. I'll take this back. I'll take this. And this. And this. And this. And this. And this. That's now all of that is mine. Now we've got to make a vault, but we won't be doing that in this episode. Now this is the absolute destruction that I've had to leave in Shaq's base to be able to get in there. There was no way anyone was guessing the password. So I used Chorus Fruits. And I learned this trick from an Iskal85 video. Where False Symmetry used a Chorus Fruit to get inside of Iskal's vault. Back in Season 6. So now that we know that works. And I've showed it off to the rest of the world. We need to make a vault that can combat this. Which is going to be difficult. But I've got my ways. Now that our business has been finished over our Mr. Shark's base vault thing. I'm just over here at Craft's base. And doesn't this town look beautiful? I've come over here to pick up some heads that he left me just before he left the game. And I think these might be just enough to push us over the edge of sharks. So this deal that I've done with Graf may be what wins us the game. I'm going to head over to the mini game district right now. Because there's just four minutes left in the head game. Oh no. As you can see, I'm currently sat on 162 points. Five heads in here, which takes us up to 187. Another three heads, which if I'm not mistaken, takes us up to 202. He's got another 50, 55. 60, 65 points, which takes him 205, and then he's got one in his hand as well, so. GG, Shark. No way I can catch up to you. You've won. He doesn't say it on the signs, but by the heads in the crates, you've won by, like, three points, so well done, man. So this is mine? 
I think some of it, I'm not sure how, how it works, but you'll get first dibs. I'm gonna pull the U. Are you ready? Wow! That, that hurts. Alex has recounted all the heads just to double make sure that these points are accurate. And it turns out that because Shark still got another one in there and I've just entered another four, me and Shark have actually drawn. We we drew. So what does that mean? All right. So there's 10 prizes with with like the diamond blocks and every shulker box. So I guess I'll just like, do you guys just want to say like one number each? So like they're mixed up in my inventory and then whatever number you guys say you guys get. That's actually, like the only fair way to split bad. it. All right. That's fair. All right. So who wants to go first then ladies first so let me give a bit of context after me and shark drew we knew that we had to split the prize pool but there was one super shulker box up for offers and that was the gear box it contained two super tools and a light and a whole bunch of a variety of enchantment books and me and shark were absolutely battling it out to try and win this all right um seven i'm breaking three books i wanted that so that's that's fine four yay i wanted this three. Oh. Let me do nine. Oh. One, one. Eight. Ten. Oh. There's two shulker boxes and one diamond block left. So two. Oh my god, the gear it's the moment of truth. Yeah, it's 50 50. And my heart's racing. Right, um, uh, one. Oh. Is that it? Yes! Yes! Oh, thank God, man. GG, Shark. All right, I actually got the things that I wanted. I managed to get the golden carrots, the iron, the mending books, and two diamond blocks. You you have no idea how close I was to saying two on that last decision. It was a 50-50 chance, as if it was, like, the last one, too. GG, Shark. Good game, man. <laughs> Good game. That was awesome. That was really fun. What a plot twist. The fact that we actually got the gear box and we actually even got to be considered for winning after Alex recounted the points is mental, but do you know what that means? We can finally get rid of this massive, disgusting, ugly platform. Oh, phantom head. All of this platform, which will actually increase the rates of the witch farm. I'm not going to lie to anyone. I am kind of glad that the games are over. As fun as they was, it feels so refreshing now that that massive platform's done and we don't have to worry about trying to spawn in wandering traders every second of the day we can just get on with projects like usual obviously until the next game comes around but i think i might see the next one out if i'm honest all right now that the games are officially over we've got to move on and as you can see i've laid out this ice path going over here because i think it's about time we get a proper storage system in place for this farm. The design that I'm going for is three shulker loaders and one just normal item filter. These are gonna be things like redstone, gunpowder, and sticks. We've also got a redstone light indicator here so that when this dispenser is fully out of shulker boxes, it turns on and we can go back round into the maintenance room and fill the dispenser up like so. These are obviously going to be hooked up to item filters such as these and the same with these ones down here. Now I believe the farm itself produces seven different items. So obviously the three that I've previously mentioned are going to go here and then we're going to have things like glowstone, sugar, glass bottles and spider eyes in these last four. For anyone that's wondering how this system works, it's quite simple if you think about it really. So if we take some redstone out of here and fill this entire thing up, as you can see there's no current output anywhere. So the way it works is when this hopper reaches 23 items, it breaks it and it puts another one out. Now obviously we're going to have walls either side of this so every time this will flow through here and into this chest and what this does is this just lets a redstone signal out and it powers this which in turn locks this hopper right here it also says that this needs to be powered it powers this block which also powers this hopper updating this observer which carries the thing along pushes this upwards which powers this and breaks it and then this observer right here tells it to spit out another shulker box the way these systems work right here is pretty simple it just it's just your regular item filter so i'm not going to go over that but it's now time to build this up in the atomic craft server so all that's left to do now is to just load this up with shulker boxes and put one right there i think 
and then this system should all be working i've still got to fill some items in and build up this water stream that goes across and then it'll drop back down for these four items right here as you can see glass bottles sugar glowstone and spider eyes if we just grab some red out of here and emulate a dropper clock this thing should now all be working so i've just thrown three and if it's working all three should go in there so all that's left to do now is to build this thing up another two times and then build these smaller little item filled things up another six times i think and then hook some chests up and then we've actually got to decorate the room so the system is fully built up what i'm doing now is just entering in the Filters, making sure that they're all good to get exactly the correct amount in there. And then 41 in each. One, two, there we go. This system is now fully built up. And if we take a look at this thing, I made a little, well, it doesn't look little, but I made a bit of a modification here. I realized that I could store more chests than what I uh, did in my creative test world. So originally, where the chest would stop here. They're now done and there's another three double chests above which should last for a while. I've just emptied out a whole bunch of gunpowder and sticks into them hoppers over there that's spitting out into a dispenser clock that runs all the way down here, up there and across and this is my first test. I put these in by myself because these were already filled to the brim. I haven't filled up the sugar or anything like that so I can't really see if this side is working it should be working because it should slip along the water stops there so it should slip along across this ice and i'll put a block there just to make sure nothing escapes from it then we've got these hoppers that bring it down into these item filters and across and right here i think i need another dispenser clock for any overflow protection so now that the overflow protection has been installed, it's, I think this system is all working. Now, there was one flaw while testing it out, but I think it's just a one-off thing. We got a bit of gunpowder in this hopper here and a few sticks. Now, what I'm thinking is that that's just because we sent in about 30-odd stacks of items at once, and obviously we won't be doing that when the farm's actually running. So I think, I think that's all good, but if we do appear to be getting any more losses then i'll have to check it out but now that that's in place i think it's time to go afk overnight and see how much shulker boxes of things we get but it's just about time to switch off the farm it's been an entire night and i'm wondering what sort of drops we've managed to get from this remember that this had one shulker box in this had one this had three these had just about a double chest worth each that's not bad. Got two in, so that's one more. Got another one in there. And then... That's not bad. That's pretty good, actually. So, let's... Ooh. Ooh. Um... Why has that happened, then? Oh, no. This observer's facing the wrong way. I have no idea how many items we could have potentially lost here. Oh dear me. So if we just emulate this being full here, if we take these out and put this in, once this hits over 23 items in there, this thing will break and replace. Oh. Hold on. That didn't, that didn't look too good. Why did that one... Why did that break? I think I've figured out the issue with this and it's because this redstone was powered because we had quite a lot of backlog from the night. Obviously we didn't get to pick up all of the drops, which means that some of this redstone was already at a signal strength, which might be an issue with this design. So I might need to take another look at this. So what happened was when I put 23 in here, because there was already a bit of a signal strength coming from here, which was already powering this. It powered two modules and broke, well, both of these shulker boxes. Now, because all the filters are out, I can show you properly how this is supposed to work. If I take just these 24 items here, put that in there, it only breaks the one, which confirms my suspicions about this system being slightly flawed, so we might have to take another look at that. But it should be a relatively easy fix. 
I'll do that off camera though. Now I almost forgot it's that time of the video again to do the comment of the day. I forgot in the last episode. Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry about that, but let's go on to this episode's comment of the day, which goes to Blue Rim. He says, two witches are watching two watchers. Which witch would watch which watch? What a tongue twister and it sort of confused my tiny little skull. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I think we've made quite a good progress in today's episode. If you have enjoyed it, then please give it a like. And if you're new here, then please consider subscribing. But anyway, my name's been just James, and I'm out. I'll see you. Also, don't forget about the community Discord in the description below and the Patreon. Bye.